Stropro released a new version of the optical snoot, the version 2. Let me pick it up. I spent a couple of weeks with this new optical snoot and in this video, we'll talk about the improvements that were made compared to the first version and is it worth upgrading? Let's get into it. First things first, some disclosures. Like the first version of the version 1, basically, of the optical snoot, I bought this unit with my own cash. I did receive a small discount from Stropro as I am part of their affiliate program. And links are below if you want to get it now. This will not influence my review of this unit, although, spoiler alert, it's positive. A version 2, right? Was there any important improvements that were made to this unit? Well, I'll share the tech and some in-depth impressions of and my usage at the end of this video, and I'll share my summary's opinion there. But with that, let's first open the box and see what's inside so we can comprehend better what's going on. For that, we have to go to the studio. So in terms of what you were getting before, you received in the package, you got uh, basically adapter for the gobo inserts so that you would slide it in there and add your gobo pattern in between. And you got about three or four patterns that comes with the old units. In the new one, it's entirely different. Let me open the box for you. So as you can see here, you get a box from Stropro with a, a gobo kind of design here. And if we open the box, the first thing that you will get, well, the biggest thing is the actual brand new optical snoot. As you can see, it is uh, a little bigger than the previous version. And there's uh, some differences that we'll cover right now and also later in the video. And then you also get a lot more inserts than before. You also get, uh, depending on which version you buy, you can also buy the proprietary lens coming from Stropro directly. So if you don't want to rely on the third party lens like uh, you used to have to, uh, either a Canon mount or a Nikon mount, like the one I have here, this is the Sigma 70 300. And as usual, you get the uh, Gobo uh, disc or ins that helps you basically insert the gobos inside of it uh, that basically goes with your gobos and that's pretty much it for what comes inside of the box if ever you got the version with the lens if you don't get the lens then you get just this now that we're back from the studio let's get this technical stuff out of the way the unit without any projector lens weighs a whopping 853 grams or 1.87 pounds which is actually close to double the weight of the previous version let's compare it this is double than this. So if you end up buying the proprietary lens kit, the 50 millimeter lens, which is this, adds another matter or 0.7 pounds to the overall unit. So the increased weight can be slightly negative if you have a head like the Godox 8400 Pro with its infamous droopy head. If you have any other mounts like Prophoto or even Allen Chrome, shouldn't be too much of an issue. The construction and build quality of this new optical snoot improve significantly. The aluminum oil used in the new optical snoot, which is this one, looks and feels really tougher than the previous version. I know it's kind of subjective and sounds like a trust me bro moment, but if you have a chance to hold both units, you'll feel and see the difference. It's really a nice way to improve something that was already good and make it way better. In terms of size of the new optical snoot, you can find that it's 0.5 inch bigger than the previous version at seven inches. And because it is significantly heavy too, you can see the circumference of the unit is much larger than the other one. So uh, it's a little negative if ever you carry this around everywhere, but the difference in size between this one and the other one shouldn't impact your bag too much. And speaking of the inside, something very important. Inside of the Stropro Optical Snoot version 2, which is this one, you'll find a new housing now made of aluminum and very smooth aluminum compared to the marble version that we had previously. And if ever you watch my previous video of the Optical Snoot, you can watch it here or there, I forget. You know I dislike very, very much the frosted glass version in this one. And I'm glad to say that in a version 2, they improved this very, very much to the point that I cannot find any texture when I blast thing on the wall and trying to find it. So if ever you use this for a portrait thing, this will be cleaner results on your subject skin. And it's a really, really great change in my opinion. Now, if you ever go to the Shopro website, whenever you end up purchasing this one, they claim that the, this new optical snoot is actually more efficient at preventing power loss than this one. If ever you ever use a snoot in your life, you'll know beforehand that this thing or these things will take out a lot of power out of your flash. 
in my estimates for general three to four stops. I've even asked Instagram for questions on the optical snoot if they had any before this review. And one of the issues that one of my followers found out is that the snoot really cuts down a lot of power. It should have been known. I'm not ent exactly sure of his current setup, but I know he used the SK400, a pretty cheap light. Based on my experiences, uh, you're typically stuck shooting at 2.8 or less if ever you really, really insist on using ISO 100. So the question is, did this really improve power loss? Let's find out. So for the basis of this analysis, we're using the Lumo Power as a light meter. So without any optical suit in front of the light, we get a reading of 7.1 with the Lumo Power at a distance of about three feet. Again, the tests were made for these two models without any lenses since that varies too widely depending on whatever you use. But the old version of the snoot, which is this one, measured at 4.5. The new version now measured at f5.0. So this is a difference of one stop for the new version versus one and a third for the original one. Now, if you're scratching for every possible stop from your light, this might be a big improvement and it might be worth a change. If you're comfortable though shooting at ISO 400 and even 800, I wouldn't consider switching for the output alone, but that is entirely up to you. And for those who will ask here on screen, the data with the lens attached, we compare the old method, which is a zoom lens, which in that case is Sigma 7300, to the new method or the new version, the 50 millimeter 1.8. The build is where things get very interesting. With the previous version, it was recommended that you use a mid-range zoom lens. This meant, in my opinion, for very inconsistent experiences for anyone that purchased the previous version. If you didn't have a wide enough aperture or your lens didn't open up at all, you would basically cutting down tons of power. I mean, you still can get a lot of work done with a 7300 EF mount lens like I have, but like I mentioned in the video, I highly recommended buying a wider aperture lens. In that case, they finally listened. StroPro offer now a package with a brand new projector lens and the projector lens included in the package is a solidly built 50 millimeter 1.8 lens with some real weight to it. For reference, if I compare this to my Zeiss Sony 55 millimeter 1.8, the difference in weight between both of them is 288 grams. I mean, the amount of groove in that lens also feels extremely secured. So the thread count goes up to five and it takes a real long time to screw in. So it feels very secure. And as you know, I'm all for security and secure gear set, so plus one for that idea. The focusing ring that is located in front of the lens, of course, has a smooth operation, and the grip teeth that you actually would be manipulating feels very smooth and present. Like you're not wondering what you're doing whenever you're touching that. And after a few weeks of usage, I'm glad to say that it didn't change at all and still feels pretty secure. And for the ones that will be asking, uh, the manipulation of the front element or the zoom ring does not affect the fact that it's screwing or not, in my case. I'm using a balanced mount in my case because I'm using Godox products, but uh, there's no shaking whatever I'm pulling in. And I have a friend that used Ellen Chrome and no issues there. So no issues again. And now one of the biggest and best improvements to made to that light we can finally turn the head around. You know, the previous version of the optical snoop, which is this had a major flaw. You couldn't really turn the gobo pattern uh, using the optical snoop. You really had to detach and untouch or unscrew these things with screws and it was a pain and it took forever. With the new version, you simply have to unscrew the little bolts or knobs here with your fingers, turn the gobo into the position that you want and you're done. If there's any argument that I might give you to switch from this to this, just turning that thing around might be it for more precise patterns. For some reasons, they added a nice thumb grip, which I really welcome because the previous version did not have one. And this one has a, like, I mean, it's following the line of the material, which is Maybe it's slightly odd. I would have preferred it to have parallel. But again, at this point, I believe this is nitpicking. This is significantly larger and feels a little better than the previous version, but it wasn't a really a breaking point before. And now with that slight improvement, it's great to have improvements in general, but it's nothing that will break either uh, the decision between this and this, let's say. So it's good. It's good. The gobo inserts that you would put in action in this pattern are smaller than the previous cards. And if you followed my recommendation of buying actual uh, gobos from Alibaba or AliExpress, I'm happy to announce that these still fit within that uh, insert. But 
check this out. If you end up buying this new kit with a new optical snoot, it comes with a whopping 16 patterns. And this is pretty awesome if this is your first kit compared to this one, which only had four patterns available whenever it was sent to you. Previously, I had to scour the internet for finding additional shapes, wait six weeks for international shipping, and the wrist at the GoPro didn't really fit, even though I measured everything like five times. So this is great news if this is your first pattern. They give you options, amazing options actually, out of the gate. The GoPro patterns that gets included into the new optical snoot range from the usual windows pattern to the more intricate design such as let's say a disco ball or a very detailed plant. The kit also comes with a set of gel gobos and I actually really like. The previous gobos that they were giving you were actually little piece of papers that uh, you would insert somewhere between the gobos and to be honest they look flimsy and never really like to use them. With this new optical snoot the way to insert them is actually pretty smart. Instead of having the gels really like attach strangely somewhere they are at the very end of the lens and there's a way for you to attach them directly inside. I kind of wish though that with the selection that they gave you, they would have given you color correcting gels as of now you only get like really basic colors but nothing that's like a CTB or a CTO or half CTO etc etc. Nothing that you can't fix with a little ingenuity but something I would have liked out of the gate. Also some caution, I would not put uh, any gels right in front of the gobo or the gobo inserts right here. Uh, because as you can see I melted it down so I highly recommend that you follow the method of putting it really at the end of the lens like that it's going to protect it from any heat that you might find or that would be too hot especially if you're using the next big improvement made to the optical snoot. So as I said the big improvement to this optical snoot is now it is finally rated to be used with LED light which is amazing which means you video guys are finally in although there's a caveat. If ever use continuous light with this, I've used it with a new light from a new company called Pixel, rated at 220 watt. It gets really, really hot. And I've reached out to Stroll Pro to ask whether there was a maximum rating, let's say a maximum amount of power you can actually dump into this light. They said there was none. And Stroll Pro tested COB LEDs from 30 to 300 watt. And since most LED lights have different standards when it comes to ventilation or a heat mitigation, like their heat sinks and all that fun stuff, it's actually, as they recommend, best to leave it to the user. But they did caution that, as I discovered, the unit can get very, very hot, which, like I said, is true. The lens projector stayed cool enough, though, for manipulation throughout the entire time that I've used a LED light with it. So your gels or anything like that won't be melting away anytime soon with this. But if you end up like me using this with LED light, make sure to bring some gloves. And for those who may be asking, this is not a default of this unit. I mean, it just receives heat and it dissipates it. It's the nature of optical snoot in general. Uh, let's say Rob made a review of the Godox optical snoot made for LED specifically, and it's the same story. It gets really stupidly hot, and this is the nature of the thing. So be careful. And now for the controversial portion of this, cost. So for some, this at $365 is expensive, and I get it. The first version of the Optical Snoot was sold originally at $299 Canadian or $284 US or $34 US, I don't recall, I'll put it here if ever you're American, and this is without a lens. Now, version two, again, without a lens, is now $365, so a $65 hike, or I can't do math right now, but I think it's about $284, if I recall my notes. Now, the difference of, again, the Canadian of $65, is it justified? In my honest opinion, yes. The first major point, if ever you're a multifunctional artist or provider like me, is that you get LED functionality, which is, Certainly possible if ever you had this, but it was really not recommended as this was not made and this not ventilate as well as this one. Plus, you get 12 additional patterns and overall the unit is more flexible in terms of manipulation and user friendly. And as I got older, it also became very much more demanding with gear and I understand that you have to pay more to get more. And these added factors are good enough to me to say that I don't mind paying a couple more dollars for more functionality, which is great. I mean, just think about it. You can now take this out on your lighting jobs if ever you're a video guy. Also, you don't have to wait six weeks to get a new set of patterns that are interesting. And you have gels from the outset and the lens is actually included for a little more. 
I mean, you just have tons of the go. It's really worth it. And the price tag of 365 is again without the lens and with the lens, it's 490 something dollars. So let's recap all that I said in a too long, didn't read. I just want to get your final opinion. Here it is. So we have to separate who would potentially buy this, right? Are we talking about someone that owned an optical snoot or someone that wants an optical snoot, which means you never bought an optical snoot before. If you already own an optical snoot and you're looking to upgrade, honestly, I don't see a super, super crazy strong reason to upgrade unless the LD capabilities, the additional gobos, a better lens and the ability to rotate is actually critical to your work. You can still get some actually work done with the older one. If you have the previous version, I mean a simple solution, and this is my tip to save you money, is to simply go on eBay and look for a 50mm Canon lens, an EF mount of course, and just make sure they have manual aperture. This should do really nicely versus spending another 300 plus dollars Canadian. Again, this is your, my opinion, but if you want to get this, this is really awesome. So if you do not have an optical snoot, as I'm recording this, the version 1 isn't available anymore on the Stroper website. You can always try to source it from other websites that are a little more shady and have less warranty, so your mileage may vary with your seller. In my opinion, this is the first time I can actually recommend this to a broader spectrum of people because the flexibility that you get from an optical snoot from the get-go, especially paired with the proprietary lens or the projector lens, is unbeatable. I mean, you get gels you get a really good lens you get uh like i mean a good insert it's not functional with leds and it's not cumbersome as the previous other versions it's actually pretty easy to use and it unleashes a lot of capabilities if you are in reaching the end of the intermediate sector of your career and you can do so with way less effort than you have to do before and try to crank that thing as high as you could uh, with a whole lot of complication I mean, when handled in the studio, I was able to shoot at high apertures, even by maintaining a clean ISO of 100. Plus, not having a lens so close to your subject or the background is actually freeing. The new version of this optical snoot allows you to just fast and precisely without too much thinking. Again, it also covered a lot of the weaknesses that we had before with the previous version, right? So this one had a terrible glass element that we cut a lot of power and also create really nasty texture on some skin. And the housing now is better ventilated and it's easy to manipulate. So other than the high ticket price and maybe the limited set of gels, there's nothing much negative to say about it. Overall, I believe we're reaching peak quality in terms of convenience for optical snoots. Again, my recommendation, uh, these things sell out really quick. So make sure you grab yours and links are always in the box below. And I want to thank you for purchasing from those links below because they help out this channel and for us to create more content and reviews like this. This has been Evans B for the Sharpen channel and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.